Hey guys, I just went ahead and finally complete Rise of the Ronin. Took me about 72 hours to do so. I did all of the side missions, all of the bond, like, loyalty missions. I 100% the map. I didn't go and, and catch all the cats or anything, but I at least got my bond level up in all of them. I did all of the, like, disturbing beast missions and stuff like that. So, uh, let's get into it. Let me give you my pros and my cons and... Why I feel like this is a criminally slept on game right now. I, I, unfortunately, you know, it kind of came out with uh, For Forbidden West, the PC version, and Dragon's Dogma 2, you know, all within like the same two days of each other. And I think as a result, it got overshadowed pretty hardcore. But I got to say, this is kind of a sleeper hit for me. I really pleasantly enjoyed my experience. And let me tell you why. So let's get into the pros. First things first, it's a Team Ninja game, and uh, wouldn't you know it, the combat is really, really good. This is basically Neo combat, except you're not fighting, you know, like monsters, and obviously there's no magic. But other than that, it's pretty Neo adjacent. You know, if, if you guys have played the Neo combat, then you'll know you can change between multiple stances that will be more or less effective based on the uh, enemy type. And, you know, that also changes your moveset. And then this game also has uh, what's called martial arts, like martial moves, which are special moves. So as you play through the game, you'll actually unlock new stances and new techniques and stuff like that that will be you know more or less effective against certain enemy type and the combat feels really really good it's fast paced i i know a lot of people are naturally going to compare this to ghost of tsushima it is not like ghost of tsushima okay i know they're both set in this like feudal japan type era this older era but these guys these games literally end in similarities there like they're just open they're both open world and they're both around the same time period and that's it this is a far more fast paced far more arcadey combat style and it relies heavily on your ability to parry it relies um a lot on your loot loot is a very big mechanic of this game upgrading your gear and getting gear and I'll talk about that a little bit in the negatives, but this is not at all like a Ghost of Tsushima, you know, more like realistic uh, combat type of thing. However, the story, which we'll get into now, is far more realistic. And I gotta say, if you were to tell me at the beginning of the year that a Team Ninja game where I have not known what the fuck was going on in Neo 1 or Neo 2, um, I didn't really know what the hell was going on too much in ninja gaiden either right if you were to tell me that a team ninja game was going to have a better story than final fantasy 7 rebirth i would say you were absolutely insane but after playing the game i gotta tell you the story is incredibly engaging and good in this game it's not at all like a neo or anything like that this story is there, you have a lot of decisions as you go through, and I don't want to spoil anything for the game, but, you know, it starts off, and you think it's going to be kind of generic where you're just trying to find this person that you got separated with, and it quickly turns into, oh no, I'm actually right in the middle of some serious political tension and based upon my decisions the things that i say how i interact with people i can entirely form the fate of japan as we know it i can choose if they should you know be buddy buddy with america or buddy buddy with uh britain you know the the great britain um you know you can kind of choose these decisions and it turns into far more of a narrative experience than team ninja has ever done which i think is why it was so surprising to me because i just didn't really think they had it in them to write compelling characters i've never been really into any of the characters in any of their games unfortunately they've always had like cool designs you know but i've never really been interested in them as people and i'm i really like a lot of the characters in this game 
and this game does romances better than almost any other game i've ever seen do romances it doesn't feel like you're making this bond with this person because there's a lot of like key characters and you'll have a bond level with them and then you do the video game thing you know where you give them gifts and you talk to them and based on things you say or missions you do with them they'll like you more or less right and uh, as a result you can romance some characters but it never felt to me as if like it was just like oh yep this is just thrown in the game and now you're gonna bang which i feel like a lot of video game like relationships sort of devolve into this really did just feel like two adults actually like coming together based upon their circumstances and falling for each other and i was really really surprised by that the maturity in the writing is really really good and i loved like a lot of the romance scenes i was a dirty cheater i romanced a lot of people <laughs> but um i i love the romance scenes i loved getting my bond level up with a bunch of the characters and figuring out more about them and overall i was just really pleasantly surprised with all of the characters with the writing and with the voice acting in japanese um I'm not going to put, put this necessarily as a negative because the Japanese voice acting is so good. But uh, yeah, the English voice acting is pretty fucking rough, unfortunately. I, I could not stomach it. I had to swap it to uh, Japanese. But very surprised about the narrative, how you can shape your adventure, how it changes based on the side stuff you're doing and who likes you and who doesn't. And uh, overall, that mixed with the gameplay led me to have a very, very enjoyable time playing through the game. I also think that uh, the open world does a pretty good job of not throwing a bunch of, you know, menial horseshit at you. Something I criticize a lot of open world games for doing is just kind of throwing garbage at you because it's open world and they're trying to pad the content. In this game, Yes, they have, you know, the cats that you can collect, but if you just want to, like, actually be able to see all of the important content and stuff in the game, the stuff that you actually have to do, none of it is annoying. It, it does not feel like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, where they are hiding some of the best content in the game behind doing all of this menial shit. Uh, this felt like every single thing that you could do in the open world and stuff was really interesting and uh you know yes a lot of it does come down to just outpost clearing out but when the i'm fine with clearing out outposts when the gameplay is as good as it is and the gameplay is really good and while there isn't magic you know in the game so you don't have that rpg mechanic there's significantly more weapon types in this game than there is in neo and momo relax brother jesus christ can't you see I'm doing a review. Enough. Sorry. I don't know. He's making weird sounds. Just rah, rah, like a little a weasel or something. Uh, <laughs> but there's way more weapon types in this game than there is in something like Neo. And you mix that with the, you know, the special moves that these different weapon types have and the different stances. And you just have a combat system where... Yeah, you might get bored of one weapon. You know, I was using Greatsword for a while and I got pretty bored of it um, because it only had, you know, like three stances. But then I swapped over to Odachi and I was having a ton of fun with that. So, yeah, I, I think the gameplay and the uh, open world nature just sort of facilitating more gameplay on top of the fact that the narrative and the story is really engaging i really really enjoyed my time with the game a lot but it's not all sunshines and rainbows let's get into the negative first things first i only played on normal mode call me a bitch if you will but one thing i found very very frustrating about this game is it does something no other game has done before and there's a reason why no other game has done it before and that's have your parry as an attack this no matter you know even after 72 hours this is so fucking clunky you press triangle, it does a special attack, which, you know, as with all of your attacks, changes based upon your stance, which changes the timing of the attack, the range of the attack, you know, the speed of the attack. Um, and you have to press this button and do this attack as you're getting hit. 
you know, to do a counter spark or, or a parry. And parrying is very, very important in this game because the dodge is not very good. This is not a game where you're just gonna, you know, be dodging a bunch. Uh, it's really made for you to utilize that counter spark, that parry. And uh, yeah, I just did not at all like one, the button scheme, pressing triangle to parry, very, very weird. And two, having a block, but to parry, you don't just tap block, you know? You, you have to do this designated attack. And really what it ended up doing for me, you know, when I was using Greatsword, which is just naturally a slower, harder hitting weapon, it ended up, if I missed a single parry, since I'm fucking flailing around my giant sword and standing there, I'm just going to get hit with an entire combo. And you've probably seen that in the gameplay, right? Me doing this like attack because I barely miss a parry and now I just get hit by an entire combo. Whereas in a normal game, you know, a Lies of P or a Sekido or something like that, since your parry is just tapping block, at the very least you get to block if you missed that parry or stellar blade which just came out you know which i've been playing so i think you know they tried something new here and it's not it there's a reason why no other game does that um especially when it's like as integral into the combat as pairing is in this game it does end up feeling a little clunky another negative Everybody has said it, but I do have to say it. While it's not something I care about, graphically, this game is not great. It looks like a PS3 game that was remastered for PS4. You know, it looks like a PS4 higher quality version of, uh, you know, maybe like The Last of Us upscaled up or something like that. It does not look great visually. And this goes for every single facet. The animations are not very smooth, not very great. Sometimes they can be especially janky. And in some of the boss fights, the, the animations can just be kind of jank and like very, very fast. Um, and so in the texture work, textures just in general are pretty low. I played on the 60 FPS mode, but I did look at the game, you know, on the higher quality options and the textures just we're not exactly there, I'll be honest. And in the lighting. And the lighting is also just not really the best. This does not look like a PS5 exclusive game. Like, you play Stellar Blade, and you go, yeah, this is a this is a PS5 exclusive game. You know, you play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you go, yeah, this is a PS5 exclusive game. This does not look like a PS5 exclusive game. I'll be honest, it's a little bit rough. However... I don't really care about graphics. I'm not a graphics type of person. Gameplay matters way more to me, so that's not really going to impact my score too much. What will impact my score, though, is the performance. Even on the prioritized performance mode, this game regularly drops below 60. I saw it as low as 30 FPS in some areas, and for me, that's just absolutely unacceptable. If you have a prioritized frame rate option, it should be a, you know, locked at 60 FPS 99% of the time right the other games i just mentioned final fantasy 7 rebirth and stellar blade they hold 60 like the entire time and they look significantly better than this game ultimately i think this is just because this is uh team ninja's first foray into open world so they're just probably not very good at optimizing you know that open world i also think that the loot is shit <laughs> There's not really a nice way to say it. It feels like they wanted to put loot in, but they didn't really know how to do it very well. And it shows. A lot of the time, you will be using... Like, you're watching this gameplay, right? I'm fighting enemies that are lower levels than me. Oftentimes, I'm using a great sword, which is supposed to be this hard-hitting weapon. I'm using a legendary greatsword that's been upgraded several times that is significantly higher level than any other gear that I'm finding, and it's still regularly taking me, you know, 10 plus hits in order to kill somebody, um, which is just silly. I, I, It's really weird because, ironically enough, the best weapons that I was using in the game were my fists. Because then I didn't have to worry about the loot system at all in the game. And I just was using fists and kind of owning. Fists are, they might be OP. Which also brings me to another negative. The weapon balancing is just not there. Some weapon types are much, much worse than others. For, and the best example you can give is that something like the Greatsword. 
it only has three possible uh techniques that you can learn so you're kind of stuck with that move set of the three different techniques that are you know better or worse against certain other enemy types and then if you compare that to uh, something like the katana that thing has like a dozen different techniques you know so there's definitely a bit of unevenness when it comes to uh this also the just navigating the ui i found to be kind of clunky you i had a situation where i accidentally did uh i did select all and then i accidentally hit lock and i locked every single item in my inventory which you regularly have hundreds of items in your inventory i think i had 380 items in my inventory they all got locked there was no way to mass unlock them and if they're locked it will not let you sell them and it will not let you scrap them so i had to go through and individually on every single item 380 fucking times unlock them was this a mistake on me accidentally doing, you know, lock all? Absolutely. I'll take egg on the face with that one. But it's unacceptable to not be able to just do like a mass unlock or something like that. And that's just one example for the UI navigation. I felt that it was kind of lackluster. Speaking of lackluster, I also think a lot of the skills in the game are lackluster. A lot of them are just they are interesting in like the first level where it's like oh now you can catch things that people throw at you and throw them back or now you can do you know an assassination from up above or whatever those are interesting but it quickly does just turn into you know sort of generic percentage increases that i really was not that big of a fan of and i found them kind of boring to be entirely honest and the rpg mechanics as a result definitely are worse than like something like neo where it does feel like you're really crafting a build far more souls like this game is not really souls like it's it's souls like just barely in the fact that it is pretty hard even on normal mode you know it was kicking my ass sometimes some of the bosses are insane and um you lose your stuff when you die unless you go fight that enemy again but other than that it's it's barely a souls like uh overall though you know, with all of that being said, what are my thoughts on the game? This was a really big, pleasant surprise for me. I was, I, you know, not really expecting a ton going into the game, but I went in and I've really enjoyed Neo. I really enjoyed Ninja Gaiden back in the day. I think they did Wolong Final Fallen Dynasty as well. I hated that game. I thought that game was a piece of shit. If they didn't make that, my bad. <laughs> but, but overall, I did... Uh, surprisingly really enjoy this game I got deep into the narrative I really like this idea of like shaping um shaping the the future of Japan based upon my choices I loved a lot of the characters and the representation and increasing my bonds with them and getting to know them and I thought the combat was was really fun it was very engaging Overall, for me, I would say this is a solid seven and a half game. For me, you know, a five is average, six is above average, seven is good, eight is great. I don't think it quite hits that great mark because it does have such glaring issues. Um, you know, the graphics aren't there, the animations aren't there. Um, it's very clear like this is their first foray into open world, and while the open world is not bad by any means, it also you know, is nowhere near something like a Breath of the Wild or Dragon's Dogma that really has a lot of crazy and interesting things happening in it. Um, and then, really, the biggest thing for me was that fucking parry. I just really do not like that parry. And, you know, you can see right here, like, sometimes I'm hitting the parry and, and it's going good, and then sometimes it's... It's... You just miss one parry, and it's like, all right, I'm taking an entire combo now, and I'm probably getting my ass kicked. Um, just really not a fan of how they did the parries in a game that parrying is so important in. But anyway, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for stopping by. Definitely check this out. You know, if it's, if you're into like the, that Neo type of more fast paced combat, take a look at it. Maybe catch it when it drops in price a little bit. You know, 70 is a, probably a little steep for a lot of people to play this, but there is a lot of content. Like I said, like 72 hours for me to get through the game definitely a good chunk of combat uh content there more than i got in dragon's dogma 2 for example so yeah that'll do it for me have a fantastic rest of your day everybody and i'll see all of you in the next video or stream bye bye